OpenAI just dropped a bomb. This morning, OpenAI announced an update called Function Calling. Function Calling allows GPT to do way more than generating text. GPT now can send email on your behalf. It can have access to the wide range of API endpoints to get different type of latest data. And you can even ask GPT to turn on and turn off your lights. So what is Function Calling? It basically allows you to give GPT access to a wide range of tools and functions. And then GPT will do two things. It will choose the most suitable tools to use, like an autonomous agent. And it will output a response in a structured JSON format, which is like a command that machine can understand so that those functions can be triggered. So this really unlock your imagination and make your AI apps 10 times more powerful. I'm going to give you a five minutes crash course about how to use function calling step by step. So one very basic use case for function calling is to let GPT have access to a wide range of different APIs. And it can know when to use which API to grab relevant data. And repeat API is a great place to empower the GPT apps because it has thousands of different API endpoints, provide data from sports, finance, movies, and science. And I want to build an example where we can ask GPT to do a complex task like this. What's a stock that has the biggest price movement today? Summarize the latest news about it to analyze the potential costs and add those information to my Airtable data. So this is a fairly complex task. And when you think about it, it will break down into three different parts. It will need to get the stocks that has the biggest price movement, which we can get from some finance data API. And then we will need to get the news about the stock to let GPT to summarize. And in the end, I want GPT to add those records into my air table so that I can have a list of stocks that has biggest price movement today and what is the potential cost for the price movement. To do this, I will give GPT access to the Morningstar API, which provides finance data of a stock market. And I will also write a function to let GPT have access to my Airtable so it can add new records. So let's get it started. Firstly, let's create a .env file and add all your API key for both OpenAI Airtable and repeat API. And then in the app.py, let's import a few different libraries and also load all those API keys. And then we will need to create a function list that we can pass to GPT as the tools that it can use. So I create this function descriptions list, which has three functions. And for each function, you will need to define a few different properties. You will need to give a name of the function description so that GPT will understand when this function should be called. And then you also add the parameters where you will define the type as well as the properties. So property is the part that you will need to define very clearly. What are the structure of information that you want GPT to generate so that you can feed to those different APIs and functions. And for each property, you will define the type as well as the description. So all those information will help GPT to make a decision. And if certain properties are required, you can add these required parameters as well. You can see we define three different functions get stock movers, which should get the stock that has the biggest price movement, and get stock news, which we will use to get what other news is happening for the stock. And in the end, we will have this function called add stocks news to Airtable. Let's give GPT this list of functions and see whether it can choose the tools to use. So we can try to run this query that gave me a summary of what happened to Tesla stock today. And we'll use OpenAI API directly. So we were to openai chat completion dot create and we will define the model to be gpt4 june 13 which is the latest version that they just released and we'll pass on this message and this two new properties functions which will pass on the list of function description we defined above as well as function call function call equal to auto so this means gpt will automatically define whether it should use a function or it should just generate a text like normal gpt okay so this is the results it return you can see it contains this choice object where inside it has this finish reason, which is function call. It has this message where content is none because this is not a message that GPT generate, but it's more like a function call it is trying to do. And you have this function call property where it includes the name of the function, get stock news, which is correct based on the query that we give it to it. And then the argument, it extract Tesla as the ID that we need to pass on to the get stock news function, which is perfect. So we can use this to call the function. Okay, so now let's try to write this function to get stock news. And again, I will use Morningstar as an API endpoint. I think they provide free version where you can do 500 call per month, which should be enough for testing. And I will use scan news API endpoint. I can click on this test endpoint to see what are the results it generate. So I can see it start generating a list of news articles title about Tesla. So to use it, I will click on code snip and change this to Python. 
And all I need to do is just basically copy this part and create a function called get stock news performance ID. So performance ID is a parameter that we need to pass on to the API, which is the ID of this stock. So I just copy paste it here and then replace the performance ID to be the performance ID that we pass on to the function and then swaps the API key to the API key that you store locally. So this function should return the list of stocks. And let's also write another function that can help us get which stock has the biggest price movement. And we will do the same thing. I will use get movers API endpoint and I can just copy paste this. One thing we need to change here is we should return the response.json. So we need to write a function that can extract the name of the function and handle the function call based on the AI response. So this is a function. We will get a response from the AI, which is this one, and we will create one variable called function call, which will basically try to extract information of this part. Then we'll get a function name by doing this and also get the arguments by doing this. And then here we will run a list of if conditions. So if the function name equal to get stock movers, then we will call this function that get stock movers. They will send an API key to get a list of stocks that has price movement. But if the function name is get stock news, then we will try to get the performance ID, which is a stock ID from the argument. And we will do this dot get to actually extract the information from this and to just get this part. And we'll pass on this variable to the get stock news. Now let's try if this works. Okay, great. GPT returned this response, which including function call for get stock movers. And then this triggered this function, which returned this list of stocks. So this is doing pretty well. But what we want is to return this information back to GPT so that it can decide what step to do next. Because the way function calling works is if we pass this response back to the GPT, it will be smart enough to decide what the next step should be, which in this case will be get a stock news of the ones that has biggest price movement. And it will continue running it until the finish reason becomes stopped. So we will need to create another function. So let's say ask function calling. Probably not a good name here, but it is what it is. So what this function do is we will firstly get the response from GPT and then we will do this while loop. If the GPT finish reason equal to function call, we'll continually try to fetch the data from the functions that we created before and then create a system message with a special row function, pass on the name of the function as well as the content that we got from those functions and then call the GPT again, pass on the model message history, which is the one where we created here, function list, and we'll continue to do this until the finish reason is not function call, which means GPT think there's no more need to use any tools. We already get answer and task done. So let's try this with query. What is stock that has the biggest price movement today? So we got results. As you can see, what happened is GPT first they try to call this function, get stock movers, which get a list of stocks. And then they got a stop for the finish reason. And instead, GPT generated the summarize. The stock with the biggest price movement today is COHR. So this is working pretty well. Now let's try a more complex query. What is stock that has the biggest price movement today? And what are the latest news about this stock that might cause this price movement? So this will ask GPT to do two things. One is use this get stock movers function to get a list of stocks, choose the ones that has biggest price movement, and then use this get stock news function. Let's try this. Okay, so we got results. As you can see, what happened is firstly, GPT tried to call this function get stock movers get a list of stock data, and then pick up the one that had biggest price movement, did another function call to the get stock news with this stock's performance ID. Then it returned the list of news from the second function. And then the last step is it have this stop option where GPT knows that it already get all the information it needs and return this information. This is pretty cool. So the last missing piece is to give GPT access to my Airtable. And Airtable actually provide a Python package that allow you to add items into Airtables very easily. And you will go to Airtable.com slash create slash tokens. In this page, you can create a new token where you can give a bit scope. In this case, I think it will need a write, maybe read as well. And then you will choose which workspace it should have access to and give a name. And once you create that, put the Airtable API into our .env file and then try to get the Airtable API key uh, and create table component from the Airtable library where you will pass on two things. One is the base ID, another is a table ID. To get those information, you just go to 
choose the Airtable that you want to use. The first part here is the base ID, and the second one is the table ID that you pass here. And the function is super straightforward. You just create a stock news air table where we will pass the stock name, price movement, and also the news summary. Do table.create where we will pass on all those information. And in the end, in the function call, we will add another else if. We will try to grab these three elements from the AI response and pass on to a stock news air table. So you should be able to do very cool things like please add record to air table with stock ticker, price movement, and news summary. So we'll save this and run. Python and app.py. Okay, great. So you can see on the right side, we finished the function and the, on the left side, one record is automatically put into my air table with the name of stock price movement, as well as a summary of the news and what might cause this price movement. So this is awesome. I can literally run this every morning to get a personalized finance news. And one last thing I really want to try is give GPT access to my smart home like lights. So I'm using Lyfx, which is very easy to set up. They provide all the API endpoint for me to for example, set light power to on and off or even set a color. And all I need to do is just try to uh, click on this authentication and go to account setting, create an API token, making sure you add your API token to the .env file and try to load that API token from the env file. And then we'll use this set state function. We're gonna do the same thing, create this function called control light and give a state which will be either on or off. And then I will pass on the token to the header and the payload will be power state, either on and off. And then I will add this function to the function description that we pass on to GPT. So I will give the name control light. Description is turn on and off the light. And in the properties, I will define a state which will be either on and off. And here you can also give this property to tell GPT that they should only choose from these two options. And in the end, don't forget to add a function under the function call. Let's run this. <laughs> it works. So this is GPT function calling. As I mentioned, it is super powerful. So definitely recommend to do some cool stuff. I've attached GitHub link in the description below so that you can take a look at the sample code I created in the tutorial or continue posting interesting AI experiments I did. So if you enjoy it, please subscribe and I see you next time.